Well, when um, when we speak about the, the conflict, the war in Ukraine these days, I think uh, it's very important to know who informs and who disinforms these days. And when we talk about uh, the the role played by by various uh, players in the region in informing people, I think we have three uh, categories. On the one hand, uh, of course, we have uh, all the, the international media, global media, Western media that have correspondence there uh, or not, and that inform about what is what is happening um, and they usually are uh, trustful sources of information uh, secondly we have a lot of um, uh, people on the ground uh, journalists from Ukraine or other countries who work in who are in the field um, and many of them of course um, um, broadcast or uh, write articles about what is happening um, and they represent a very important source of information because they are there um, and of course you have to know uh, who's there and who uh, uh, how legitimate the sources of information are. If you go on social media, on Twitter, for example, you will find a lot of these people uh, all the time, all the time sharing with, uh, uh, with the world what is happening. And finally, there is a third category of, of um, players that are informing, and this is uh, a lot of the, the local media, the Ukrainian media, uh, both in Ukrainian but also in English. We have, for example, Kyiv Independent which is a newspaper that was set up only two months ago after the, uh, uh, the uh, ownership in, uh, uh, in the newspaper Kiev Post changed. They, uh, all the journalists left and they created this newspaper, which is a ma major source of information. On the other hand, when we talk about this information, uh, most of it is coming from Russian sources. And here also we can divide them into three categories. On the one hand, of course, we have the official state media in Russia uh, that is uh, open about uh, its sources of funding, its ownership. Everybody knows that they are um, uh, media outlets that support the government. On the other hand, we have the, uh, the media outlets supported by the, the government in Moscow that are addressing the global audience. And here we have outlets such as Russia Today that, is, uh, that are broadcasting to the world. Um, and third, we have a category of sources that unfortunately operate um, uh, somehow hidden. They do not share with the world what, uh, uh, what their source of uh, funding is. They do not uh, tell people who owns them. Um, and these are sometimes run by journalists who used to work for Russia Today or other state media from, from Russia, and they pretend to be independent sources of information. Now, if you ask me what is the most, which one is the most dangerous uh, of, the, of these three sources of uh, disinformation, I would say uh, that probably the third one, of course, all of them uh, are to blame, but I think the third one, uh, especially because people don't, act, don't really know who, who these outlets are. Um, now, I, I w also wanted to, uh, a very important thing to address in, in the whole uh, media ecosystem these days is the audience. We have all these outlets from Ukraine, from Russia, we have the global media outlets, but the, the key question is who's listening, who's watching what? Um, and here, uh, I think it's very important to say that Russian disinformation is focused on both the local audience um, and the international audience. The international audience, because on, on a longer term, of course, Russia wants to, uh, to have people in other countries listening and, and getting their propaganda, but I think for them at the moment, on the short term, the most important thing is, is to reach out the Russian population, because if things get worse at home, uh, they, will look ver they will endanger uh, the government in, in Moscow. Another uh, major topic of discussion uh, in the past week after the, uh, the war uh, erupted in, um, in Ukraine uh, was whether uh, to ban sources of disinformation and, and propaganda. And although uh, I, always, uh, I, I always spoke against banning any media outlets in the world and I always believe that it's not, it's not fair and it is not good for media freedom and freedom of expression to ban anything in the world, I think the measure that was uh, taken by some uh, government especially in Western Europe, to ban uh, propaganda outlets from Moscow, such as uh, Russia Today, uh, I think at this crisis, at this time of crisis, uh, is justifiable. Uh, because in such extreme conditions, it is, uh, it is justifiable to, to ban sources of war propaganda.